Oh my god. Is that filming? This is recording. Oh my god. You can tell by the title of this episode that this is emotional. <laughs> Goodbye for now. Not me immediately wanting to cry, but only for now. Oh my god. Like we will this is not the end. Oh, just putting some air conditioning on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Really if you're hot. watching on YouTube, you can see that we're back in the Tessie. Yeah, we're back in the Tessie for the goodbye app. Back where it all began in the first place. Which is crazy that randomly one day we were just like, let's start a podcast and, and then f- film in your Tesla. <laughs> it became like one of the most fun things I've ever done in my life. A hundred percent. Sometimes when I like think back to the conversations that we've had and like the fun times, even like having guests on the show when we had Emily a part of it for a while, mm-hmm. like this has just been such a fun experience, like yeah. having a podcast. Mm-hmm. And for two little chatterboxes, we two have just yappers. two yappers. Two. We have just spoken some shit. Mm-hmm. We love to yap and we love that you guys love to hear us yap. I know. And today I'm drinking wine out of a margarita glass. <laughs> is that what that is? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> We're at my dad's place and it's a bachelor pad. So it's the biggest. Oh my God, not me doing that. In the microphone, <laughs> it's the biggest bachelor pad. It is a bachelor pad. I'm here for it though. So <sighs> welcome back to the podcast. I'm Zoe. I'm Jordan. And if this is your first time listening, you have a lot to go back and yeah. recap on. Our whole lives have been on this podcast for the last year and a half. Mm-hmm. So go catch back up. And it will be back. So this is goodbye because I'm going on a trip traveling for six months with my little family, we just kind of, honestly, there's like, long story short, we just decided, fuck it, let's go on a big trip because we want to travel. And so we're just basically leaving everything behind and going. <laughs> like literally everything, their house, their furniture, their friends. As long as you're not leaving your baby home, I guess, at no, home, yeah. nothing else matters. But We're just pausing life in Australia right now, going to the US. Oh, my God. Spend some time with Bianca's family. Realm can meet her family and, yeah. I think come, it's – Sorry, I was just going to say, come follow our adventures on TikTok and Instagram. Oh, definitely. She'll be vlogging lots. I think it's about time, though, that B got back to her roots. Like, she's been here. She gave up her whole entire life. I mean, no offense, but for you. <laughs> literally. For me, yeah. Literally for you. So, I mean, it's a nice thing that you guys can now move back or just – travel back there with your kid. I know. It's crazy. You've been manifesting this since as long as I've known you. You've said, I'm going to live in America. I'm mm-hmm. going to live in America. Next minute you marry an American and mm-hmm. now you're moving to America. Like and my what? child's American now too. Really got his <gasps> US citizenship. I know. How so lucky cute. is he? The fact that he's a dual citizen and will be forever. Like he can choose where he wants to be. Mm-hmm. He can choose where he wants to live. Like, wow, you really did him good. Once, uh, like once we do this trip to the US – Relly will have traveled more than me and my entire family combined in the, his short six months of life. What do you mean? Because he's been to like Hamilton Island. Oh, like the amount of planes he's going to have been yeah, on. Yeah, like the amount of traveling. Wow. Like I feel like I've done like, you know, a fair a bit of traveling. Amount, yeah. But him doing six months in the US going to multiple places, he'll go to more than I've been to. So we're going to experience some of the US together. Seeing life through his eyes is top tier. And he's going to see the snow. He's going to see the snow. He's going to see squirrels. He's going to see maybe a raccoon. Um, And some fucking Walmarts. The whole thing. Yep. It's going to be so fun. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm so happy for you. I'm really, really jealous. But I'm just going to miss you. I know. It's going to be crazy. It's going to feel like we're away for long. But also, I feel like it's going to go really fast. Yeah, for you. When we get back. (laughs) It'll be Realm's first birthday. Time will change so much. I think you should just come over and visit us. Well, I mean, why not? That goes on to where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like my lease ends in August, Mm -hmm. which obviously seems like a while away now, but it's really not. We're already about to hit April, which is fucking insane. Mm -hmm. Like where did the first four months of the year go? No idea. Completely just bye. Mm -hmm. Um, But Like Kate Middleton, gone. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> but yeah, I guess we'll just like, I mean, I'm open to anything. I'm, I am, I'm happy and willing to drop anything and do whatever I fucking want whenever I want to do it. So mm-hmm. 
I mean, who knows where I'm going to be when my lease is over. I think you should do something crazy, like either go traveling overseas or move states. Like just fuck it. Who cares? Just do something different. <laughs> the weirdest thing, I never thought if I was <laughs> if I was ever going to live in Australia, I would be like, fuck living anywhere but the Gold Coast. Mm. Like if I'm in Australia, I'm living on the Gold Coast. However, as of late, and by late I mean like maybe the last – the last year, I feel like it's been lingering in my brain, but it's only been like more of a common thing in my brain for the last maybe six months since, I don't know, a new chapter of my life started, but what's new? Mm-hmm. Um, but I've considered like moving to a different state and I, I, I'm not going to do Melbourne because fuck that. The weather, like oh yeah, the weather. The is weather would rough. fuck me over. I cannot. I need. I need the sun. I need mm-hmm. the beach. I need the water. I need the heat. I cannot physically handle Melbourne for more than a few days at a time. So maybe Sydney. I don't know. Maybe Sydney. Perth's too far. Perth's too far for my nephew. Way too far. I want to. I. I like the I, idea of Sydney. This because I can just jump on a plane. It's an hour away. Mm-hmm. It's an hour. It's so close. Yeah. I reckon you should do it. Like, fuck it. I've never lived in Sydney, but every time <laughs> I've been there, I'm like, this place is lit. Why not? I mean, why not? Any Like, we're not trees. Like, you can... <laughs> You're fucking right. <laughs> you can go to a different state and live there for six months to a year and literally just come back if you don't like it. I know. I can literally just go and come back home. It's not hard. Yeah. And, like, I'm really lucky in the sense that, like, if I say my lease is ending and then I go, I can leave all my shit with my parents mm-hmm. And then leave my car there, not have any money to pay. Everything's mm-hmm. great. And then if I don't like it in Sydney, I can just come home and then live with my parents and everything's great. You know, Literally. it's just very lucky in that sense. And I have that option. This also brings me to a question for okay. you. Do you Ooh. think, or does Hit anyone else it. think? Can you just hold my wine for a sec? I just need to tuck my hair. Does anybody think that the novelty of the Gold Coast is kind of like wearing off? Like, I love the Gold Coast and beaches and stuff. Don't get me wrong. We will buy a family home in the South Gold Coast. I Mm -hmm. love it so much. But I feel like a part of us wanting to travel is that we're just kind of, like, bored where we are. Like, we're kind of itching to just try something new, go to new places. Mm. And I'm kind of feeling like, oh, this was, like, so fun and exciting when I moved here. Mm -hmm. Or is that just me and I'm... No, you're absolutely correct. I do... I do, I definitely agree with you. I think I've been I mean especially because I moved to the Gold Coast, I'm not from the Gold Coast. Mm-hmm. It's been 7 years now since living there, so it definitely is home to me. But post COVID and post everyone from fucking Melbourne and Sydney and Perth all moving here and everything changing, like I definitely feel like the culture of the coast has changed. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's full of just young money and influencers. Yeah. I feel like half the cafes fucking suck. Yeah. I feel like there's a good like 10 to 15 bars or restaurants that are very, very good and then everything else is subpar. And so overhyped for no reason. And so expensive. Everything mm-hmm. is expensive. I Like renting is a fucking joke. Buying a house would be a fucking joke. I can't even like the idea of buying a house on the Gold Coast for me is – years away like there's no way I could afford to do that especially with something that I wanted like Mm. living near the beach like I'm not going to move to fucking Cooma and buy a house Mm. like I'd rather just rent um but yeah it's it I definitely agree in the sense that like the hype is not what it used to be it's not as like it doesn't feel as much of like a homey space as it used to but I mean I would just have to be somewhere near the water like there's no I couldn't my idea of moving like say America for example Mm -hmm. I would really struggle being somewhere like Chicago where you guys are starting off because of not only the winter months of the fucking freezing negative 15 degrees weather, Mm -hmm. I would struggle that there's like the closest water is like that fucking lake that's near the aquarium. Like that is not good enough for me. I need waves. I need the ocean. I need fucking King Triton on his shit right now. I need that. Literally. Landlocked places are like I really find it hard Mm. to – even imagine being in a place that doesn't have a beach. When we talk about living in the US, so when we when we go there to travel this time, we're going to go to the states that we love 
and see if we'd want to live somewhere. We just want to see like if we fall in love with say California, we might fall in love with, I don't know. Who knows where we Have you go. been to San Francisco? Yeah, I love San Francisco. Love San love. Francisco. So does Bianca. She yeah. loves San Fran too. Yeah. We want to go like, yeah, up the coast of California and just see how we feel there. Um, oh we God. have made one plan though. Oh. We want to go to LA Pride. Oh my God. That would be so fun. I'm so excited. So yeah, but me and Bianca will most likely. Oh, that's in June, hey? Yeah, it's in June around my birthday. So we're thinking about going for like. So your thirtieth? No, you've already turned thirty. No, it's like my twenty second, I think. Oh yeah, twenty. Fair You're really young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teen mum. I'll have to have an adult with me when I go to LA. Yeah, be anger. <laughs> yeah. Um, we want to go to see all of the places that Vanderpump Rules was filmed oh in my LA. God. <laughs> and we want to go to yeah, LA Pride. We want to check out Venice. See if we want to live there. I just. Bianca's never been to LA, which blows my mind. So I want to take her there. And your American wife has never been to LA. No, she's never been to never LA. Never been there. No, only like what via the airport. Oh yeah, I think she's been through LAX, but she's only been like explored. I think San Fran and a couple other places in California, but not Los what? Angeles. What? I know. I feel so cultured that I've I have so many times. I know. Same. Been. What? She and she loves like. Beverly Hills vibes and like those kind of people. I'm like, you need to go there. Yeah, I feel like B would be on an episode of fucking Desperate Housewives of Beverly Hills with in a second, oh. and she'd blend in. What's it, or, what's it actually called? It's no, not, not Desperate Royal. Housewives, is it? The Real Housewives. The Real Housewives. Beverly. Desperate Housewives. Well, yeah, that would. I'm be such goals. a boomer. I would love to. <laughs> love such to be, a boomer. <laughs> love to be on that show. Yeah. How old are you now? Like thirty. 35? My gray hairs say 35, but my birth certificate says 28. <laughs> but the gray hairs, poof, bitch, they are full on. I never notice them. Uh, that's because you're not looking close enough. <laughs> They're coming out my eyebrows. It's because I did find out, I think I've said this on the podcast before, I don't actually remember. They you know that melaton, sorry. Oh, you did say that. Yeah, the injectional tan stuff that I used to do. I haven't done it in a while. Mm. Um, can it's give you early grays, yeah. True. And so now I have so many gray hairs, but it's it's building character. Worth it for the tan, right? Totally. I don't look really tan right now, but it also makes me skinny and horny, which is two very important things in my life. What melan melanin? Yeah. Is it melanin or melatonin? Mel- no, melatonin is the sleepy stuff. Oh, okay. Melan mel mellow melan. Yeah, it just makes me tan and skinny and horny, and I am all for those three. Like all my eggs in one basket for those three things. Wow. <laughs> so no bad side effects except for grey hairs. Yeah, grey hairs, and it makes me violently ill. Oh, okay. Yeah. So an- <laughs> another terrible side effect. What the fuck? <laughs> and I literally like I got actual dry reach, oh. and you're giving yourself a needle is a lot harder than yeah, you might I can't think it even- is. I can't even think about it's that. It's really, it's really like mental, like to give yourself a needle. Like After it's a full I mind game. Gave birth. They sent me, um, they sent me home with, oh, I don't know what it was. There's some needle they like give you in your stomach, and I'm like pretty anti most medications unless absolutely necessary. And they wanted mom to give me mom. something. I don't know what the fuck it was. And I was like, I'm not taking that home and injecting myself like in the stomach that is well after you get birth they would make you inject yourself they did it after the birth that you had you were like no can't do a needle (laughs) (laughs) there was no it's not necessarily about needles i'm okay with needles i just am like i mean i don't even know what the medication was but i was like i'm not taking something home and injecting myself in the stomach whatever the fuck it was Mm. so scary that doesn't sound like a very you thing to do no i I would have done it i would have been like let's give it a shot yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> Will it make me skinny? <laughs> but yeah, I think I'm I think I'm addicted to being skinny, but I eat so much food, so I don't really know what's going on. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> so that is pretty much the update on our life. So I'm taking a big trip. Jordan's considering switching up her whole entire life. What is new though? I know. Every every six months my life changes. Mm. I feel like we haven't put an episode out in a while. I don't mm. remember. When was the last time we put an episode out? I don't know. But it feels like so much shit has it's, been happening in our lives. We haven't been able to yeah. link up and do it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> my little update. I've what? been single for a while now. Um, oh, yeah. It's been a while now. It has been a while now. Everything's fine, though. Um, I started a new job today, actually. Mm-hmm. Today I started a new job. Um, I mean, I feel like on this podcast for the last year and a half, I've had three different jobs. Mm-hmm. But that's purely because I took, what, almost two years off doing OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And it sounds really fucked up, but the transition from – doing OnlyFans full-time back into the workforce is incredibly hard. Yeah. Incredibly hard going from literally doing whatever the fuck I wanted, whenever I wanted, all day, every day, making my own money, Mm -hmm. whatever, just like being my own boss, yeah, and then going back to the workforce because that's not what I wanted to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, Incredibly difficult. I only went back to childcare because it's something I can very easily fall back on. I have qualifications. It's whatever. Um, I just got incredibly lucky to work with a really good group of people. So I stayed a lot longer in that job than I thought I was going to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had my last day on Friday and it was so fucking cute. They like, took me out for drinks and like got me flowers and it, it was so dramatic, but it was so cute because, like, I'm really dramatic, so mm-hmm. it was just perfect. Um, yeah, I started my new job today. I'm back in the corporate world, which is everything that I'm good at. Mm-hmm. Corporate girly. Yeah, everything that just, like, suits me. I'm not really a big fan of um, the collared button-up, but... Do you have to wear one? I do. I cannot stand corporate attire. Really? Like, why do we live in a world where, like... Like when you drive through the city and you see like all the corporate girlies wearing heels Mm. and maybe it's just me, but like, I'm like, are you actually comfortable? No, not at all. Doing that every single day. No. I wore a button up for only one week at a corporate job that I worked and I was like, this is like suffocating. Mm. It is. It's giving porn star actually. Why? I feel like. Bitch, I feel like I need to chuck on some glasses and my big fake titties with that white little button-up shirt and I feel like I'm going to get railed on the desk. That is what I feel like I'm serving on a platter is porn star What the hell? video. But, yeah, because I wear like heels and everything, but I would never wear a tight little pencil skirt because then I feel like I'm, mm. I need to be wearing like stilettos with like a little red lacy bra hanging yeah, out I just feel there. like it's not comfortable. No, it's really uncomfortable, but I also love it. Like compared to working in childcare for the last six months where I would just chuck on a fucking shirt and some cargo shorts and mm. throw my hair up and call it a fucking day because I'd get covered in anything all day long. True. Corporate life does make you take care of yourself. Yeah, more. definitely. It makes me take care of myself. It makes me feel good in the morning. Like mm. I did, I did shit. From, I, I, I mean, I go for walks every morning before work usually, but like, now I get to have like a set routine of set hours. Like it's not a different shift every day. Mm-hmm. Like I know what I'm doing, I have sales, targets, the whole thing, something I can just progress in. Knowing me, I'm probably going to quit in six months and move away and do something way fun with my life. But for now, this is what I'm doing. By well, the next time we have a <laughs> podcast, so much will have changed. I know. Maybe I'll have blonde hair or something. I re- I doubt it, but maybe. You never know. I, I feel think like- I'm a black girly now. I, yeah, I don't think I could ever go blonde. I mean, one day when I'm, if I was ever like super feeling myself, it would mm. be really fun to just like do it for mm. fun. But just yeah, get a wig. Know. From my experience, mm-hmm. I just suggest getting a wig. Not me, literally slurring my words. <laughs> I've had not even a whole glass of Prosecco. <laughs> What's new though? I know. I feel like I'm not going to like out myself or anything, but I feel like I kind of drink like, Often, mm. often is a word to use. Not too much, but often. Like how I, many times a week? I love a good wine. Um, well, on a working week, I won't drink it all during the week. Okay. Unless Lily comes home with a bottle of wine on a Wednesday, then of course I'm going to mm. have a wine because yeah. it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, or six. I don't know. It depends on the mood. Yeah. But um, no, I never drink during the week. But I just make up for it on the weekends. Yeah. Oh my god! Like last weekend, out. I was silly. <laughs> I have not sent it in a really long time and I would love to just go hard one day. You're not even soon. having a going away thing. You're not even doing anything with your friends at all. 
This was a struggle to film the fucking podcast. It was. I know. I, Zoe hasn't even packed yet. I have And they packed. leave in 24 hours. Literally. I just didn't like – it just feels like there's too many people to like, you know, say goodbye to. And also I'm literally coming back. So I just was like so focused on – I have a feeling you won't. No, unfortunately my visa – Means I have to because the US would. Kick Aren't me you? Out. Don't you have a green card yet? No, I haven't got it yet. Oh, that's bullshit. No, I actually haven't fully applied for it yet because if you um submit a green card and it's pending, you're not allowed to travel on a different visa. Oh, which is kind of like annoying. <sighs> annoying because now it means that we're going to be traveling for six months, which means that's an extra six months of me not having a green card. Mm. But it works out with our plans. We want to come back and we want to like try to buy a house here first anyway. So we've got time. I'm in no rush to get the green card, but wow. it'll be amazing when I do. Absolutely. It'll be so cool. Oh, my God. Imagine how crazy is like when I look back before you met Bianca. Mm-hmm. And it was like an everyday thing that you would say to me, I'm going to live in America. I'm going to live in America. I'm going to live in America. Mm-hmm. And now you're literally married to an American mm-hmm. and you're moving to America. I like, love what the US. Like what the fuck? Yeah, me too. I'm a big fan. I mean, I don't like a lot of their rules and regulations, but as a whole, mm. I like their food. Yeah, the food's I really I love good. the way Americans just act. They're just so it's direct and they're like they're in their own little bubble. They don't think anywhere else in the world exists. Mm. Which is really weird. I just love it, honestly. I actually posted a TikTok making a joke about like something American that Bianca said just for a joke. And so many fucking Americans were like so mad at me. Really? Like, what did like, you say? So I made a TikTok where I was like basically I said to Bianca um, are there any states in America that have daylight savings? Because, like, I have no idea what places have daylight savings. And she said, yeah, I'm pretty sure we invented it. And I was just, like, laughing, like, ha that's such an American response, LOL. <laughs> I didn't ask if you guys invented it. I just wanted to know if any states have it. And I thought this will be – not what I asked you. <laughs> I thought this will be a funny TikTok. It'll get the Aussies and the Americans talking. Mm. It'll be funny. But yeah. – Oh, my God. Some Americans were just going ham in the comments, being like, people were saying really hectic stuff, like, you stupid Kiwi. Americans invented everything. But, and I'm like, okay, I wasn't, like, first of all, I'm Australian. Americans invented everything. People were going Come off. On. People were going off. In the, they still are. I still get, like, a, a one rude comment a day. And I'm like, guys, I love America. It was just a joke. Relax. But it's also all about the engagement, so. I know. It's so funny when people are like, someone was like, you should take this down. It's really mean. I was Why like, would no, I do it's that? it's not. Why would I take it down? Why would I take it down? Look at my engagement, sis. We're popping, Honestly. we're putting 1.5 mil right now. <laughs> I'm not taking it down. Can I just say, you know, it's so, such a funny um, consequence of like going viral, which is hilarious, is that when you go to your notifications, like you like expect to see like your friends commenting something funny on your picture and like that's a part of social media that you love. Mm. But you go to your notifications and it's just like people being so mean to you. And oh. you're just like, okay. <laughs> I know that's a part of it. I'm not trying to be like, I'm just saying. It's just like an, a funny concept that I've only just noticed where I'm like, guys, can you leave me alone? People comment really mean things. I don't, I'm not even, I have, I have not had a single video go viral in ages because I don't make TikToks anymore, which may change, mm. mind you. Zoe is um, trying to persuade me to start vlogging on TikTok, which I mean, I, my life is so fucking crazy that I probably should vlog anyway. I just haven't in ages. I, I haven't vlogged since I quit YouTube. really think that you should. I love TikTok vlogs. I love yeah. day in the life vlogs on TikTok. I love making them. I love watching them. And I feel like without the podcast, mm. we should both make day in the life TikToks. Oh, that would be so cute. It would be awesome. <laughs> well, maybe I'll start this weekend or something because there's a chance I might be going to Sydney this weekend just for fun. Really? Mm, just for fun. I feel like something suspicious. <laughs> Something suspicious is happening. Something suspicious? Me? Is this why you want to move there? <laughs> when Jordan laughs like that, it means yes. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. We will find out. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. We can't wait till next episode to find out because <laughs> it'll be like six months. 
Do you want me to change the subject? Or? Yeah. All right. Anyway, so speaking of, where the fuck is Kate Middleton? Where is she? What is happening? What is going on? I have no idea. All I've seen recently and is her that she's disappeared. And then I'm really slowing my words. And then I saw another video of her, parent, a, a photo that they posted and it's her like on a chair surrounded by the kids. But they're saying that it's her in a wheelchair mm. and they've just like green screened it out. And like photoshopped it or something. I don't understand. Which Why people would, are what's wrong with her? And saying she had a BBL or something. Oh my God. She didn't. There's the no way. The future queen having a BBL. <laughs> There's no way a royal got a BBL. I mean, but if I was a royal, that's the first thing I'd fucking do. You know what I feel like with the royal family is like if something sinister is at large, which some of the theories suggest. Mm. And I I know this is, sounds kind of mean, but, like, if you join that family, you've made your bed. Absolutely. Like, we know some of the things, but we don't actually know anything. We assume some of the things they're capable of. And I just feel like if – okay, so, you know, like, princess movies – like the Princess Diaries. Like Princess Diaries, like some of the Disney movies where like the princess meets a prince and finds out he's a prince and it's like, oh my God, this is the best possible thing to possibly, and Shrek, possible thing <laughs> to happen ever. I've met a royal. I'm going to be a part of the royal family. And then we as young girls think, oh my God, that is top tier life path to happen, right? Mm-hmm. Nowadays. Can relate. Nowadays, I feel like there's so many people that if they met a royal, say you met like a random fucking Denmark prince or something, I don't know, someone someone that you hadn't heard of, mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, I'm a part of the royal family. I feel like you'd be like, Ooh. I get the ick. I get yeah, the ick like, so what? hard. I'd be like, why are you hiding the fact that old man's a pedophile? Where's Princess Diana? Like, Wh- I'd What be happened like, to her? I'd be like, well, I can't. <laughs> I, I have don't. questions. Yeah, I would not want to marry into that. No. I'd be like, lose my number. Don't talk to me ever again gone like you just wouldn't and the fact that they've like fucked off harry and they give him no security he's literally royal by blood where are they um, also they're in the uk i think oh i thought they're in canada oh i could be lying i have no idea we I actually really don't know about the royal family the uk just i'm sorry i just burped so loud excuse me um i actually could have just made that up about the uk but i did watch the megan markle and harry I was about to say Harry Styles documentary <laughs> <laughs> with Oprah. Oh, yeah, we watched that. And that shit was intense, man. That is so fucking hectic. And everyone's giving Megan Michael shit about it, saying that she's a narcissist and that she's super manipulative. And look, I get it. I also think that. However, if I was Harry, I wouldn't want to be a part of my fucking family anyway. It's a bit scary. I just loved when Oprah said, were you silent or were you silenced? What did they say? Megan didn't say anything, which I think meant she was silenced. silenced. Mm. Mm. I love how they did complain, though, being like, we have nothing. We left without any money. We left without any security. Our children, blah, 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 blah. And they're filming it in their, like, fucking countryside mansion, mansion acreage, like, for days and days and days with a, a fucking farm and a garden and all this shit and Oprah Winfrey sitting on their fucking back porch. And she's like, we have nothing. And I'm like. I know he's like be we, fucking for real, bitch. He's there like we had to pay for our own security, and that's what anyone would have to do if they like didn't have the ro- the royal family being paid for by the taxpayers. Yeah, literally, the royal family has unlimited money; they have uncapped money. So even if Harry doesn't have uncapped money anymore, he would still have an obscene amount of money that, mm. of course, he can pay for his own fucking security. His fucking Harry. The pr- the prince like you could if you were that level of famous, you can literally basically probably pick any brand deal. Like, why don't you just get fit and call Nike and be like, "Hey, can you sponsor me for the rest of my life?" Fuck it, you don't even need to get fit. Dad bods are in these days. That's true. Are they? I mean, I have a dad bod. <laughs> I have a dad bod for sure. No, you don't. Oh my god, we can talk about this. Is like. A time to bring up one of our, like, Ooh. goals. Like, what are we going to achieve in the next six months? The next time you guys see us together. Oh my God. Because one of mine is fitness. Really? I want to, like, yeah, I want to get, like, in back into fitness the way that I was, like, a million years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just really want to get in. I just want to be fit. I want to, like, go for runs and focus on my health again. 
Oh, I love that for you. That's pretty much my main and only goal. And well, to I travel mean, and have yeah, fun. Yeah, you've got lots of other things on at the same time. So don't put too much on your plate. Yeah. All I want to do is travel, have fun, hang out with Realm. We had to go around the circle today at this job that I started. Um, so funny because I have training for a few weeks. So I started with like a group of people, which mm-hmm. is always really nice. You get to like make friends from day one. Everyone's in the same boat. Like it's always really awkward, but like at least you're, in, you're not alone. Did you do icebreaker activities? <sighs> we did. And one of them was fun facts about yourself. Oh, what is one? Go. Let's do that right My now. My fun fact about myself was that I did cheerleading as like a profession for mm-hmm. five years and all yeah. of them were like, oh, my God, no fucking way. And <laughs> how good is being the person in a room during a fun fact situation to make everyone go, what? I want to know more about her. Literally, <laughs> because everyone else, and I'm literally not lying to you, this is not a joke, every single other person mentioned their children as a fun fact. And I said, that is not fun to me. I don't think. No, even as a mum myself. <laughs> to me, the fact that you have six children, Kelly, is not fun. Oh. I think that that is torture. And then, speaking of Kelly, then she went on. You know those people? <laughs> you know those people? <laughs> you know those people that just, like, don't shut the fuck up? Yeah. But, like, in a sense of, I don't shut the fuck up. But, like, I feel like in an environment of a first day at work, mm. you should really just like shut the fuck up. Up uh, totally. I learnt more about that woman's dead ex father in law than I needed to know. I didn't need to know the amount of facts that I now know about that man because she everything, everything that she spoke about brought him up. And I was like, I don't know if you were in love with your father in law or if you're still attached to your ex and you just don't know what to do. And so you're doing everything you can to bring it up. Oh. And like I totally understand that. I've been in a position before where I will do anything. I will talk about anything to bring my ex up, which is totally fucking dumb. And now I look back, I'm like, loser. Shut but the fuck up. Mm. shut the fuck up. But like this Kelly lady, like, bitch, are you okay? Yeah, I was, I was, that's not a fun fact. Yeah, I was sitting there getting mild entertainment because they were just like, every, you know, <laughs> the lady that was like running the session was like training, talking, like giving us information, you know, mm-hmm. like we're learning. This mm-hmm. is our first day. It was all a lot of housekeeping, a lot of all icebreaker, whatever. But the last few hours was actual information about the company. Mm-hmm. And, um, Every other thing that the trainer said, there was like three people in the group of six, seven of us that had something to say. They go, oh, this is like that one time or, oh, this reminds me of this or, oh, yeah, I had this one time and I literally was just sitting there watching it. I had said nothing. I just sat there and just watched them and I I ate an entire packet of Mentos while I was just... (laughs) I love doing that. Same. I was just watching them. I got like most of pink ones, which is the best flavor. So, I mean, it was my lucky day. Watching people, like watching chaos unfold like that Mm -hmm. is, I I literally am about to do what you just said was annoying. You know, when people hear something and then they go, I have a story about that. (laughs) I was literally just about to go, that reminds me of, because it literally reminded me of. Please tell me. I'm interested in what you have to say. Um, So my dream reality TV show to be a part of would be Big Brother. And I've Same. auditioned twice in my life, years ago, really, really long time ago. Sweaty. And one of the auditions, I um, actually got through to the second round, which there's multiple rounds, so it's not that impressive. But when I got to the second round, um, I was just in shock and didn't even get to show my personality because I just couldn't stop watching the fucking chaos in f- unfolding in front of me. Like people just trying so fucking hard to make a circus of themselves for attention. Like I was like, oh my God, I wish I was making a documentary right now of people <gasps> applying for reality TV shows because these people are fucked. Like, Really? It was just so interesting. They got everyone in a big circle and you had to go around and do that sort of thing, like make a fun fact. But it was like people were just putting on a show to make sure that the producers – like saw them which honestly it obviously works for some people but and it was so fun obviously why I failed because I was just sitting there like oh my god these people are so intense wow I definitely agree with you on that one though it's my dream my childhood Mm -hmm. adulthood dream to go on big brother and I feel like I'd fucking slay it I don't think I'd be very good at all the – now it's a different – it used to be like a social experiment. Now Ugh. it's more of a game. Now it sucks. Now it's like 
how many fucking wannabe influencers can we shove in a house mm. that are obviously just all there because they're good look? It's like literally Love Island. Like they're just trying to yeah. copy those formats, which is so annoying. Literally the last Big Brother season that they had out was all singles and they just wanted them all to fuck and like mm. fall in love and make good TV. And there was only like one couple that actually had a connection. I'm like, first of all, at least like do better at your casting for mm. one. And second of all, this is not what Big Brother is about. No. Big Brother is a social experiment where you put a bunch of random fucking people that all have differences in opinions and all have shit to say and then you chuck them in a house and, and then shit hits a fan. Remember when Big Brother used to, like, be on every year, like, consistently in Australia? Think mm. of everyone that's ever won. All of them have been, like, true Australian characters. Like, yeah. they've been, like... You know, like Reggie and like Ben. She and run like, twice. Yeah. All these people that are like not wanna be young influencers, mm. fake as fuck. Like bring back Oh, I remember real Tim. Australians. Tim hadn't yeah. Tim hadn't even come out since when he was on Big Brother and when I didn't he watch won. that series, but I remember I did. Him. I remember Tim and Ben, Ben was up there in, in the season. He didn't win, but he was like this real cutie pie, bold guy with glasses and he was like real nerdy and everyone loved him. Oh, Ben from Brisbane. Yeah, Ben from Brisbane. Yeah, I remember him. He's I actually still doing something. Once. I think he's on the radio or something now. Mm. I want to be on the radio. I'm actually manifesting that as well. It's part of my manifestation. I'm saying it out loud on the podcast. I reckon I'd be really good on radio. You would. We're I've got a face for radio. It. Yeah, We're on the radio right now. My parents always told me growing up that I had a face for radio. That's so mean. Trauma. <laughs> That's so mean and so untrue. Um, but you could be on radio. That would be sick. Yeah. Radio would be fun. I would love it. I just want to be like Jackie O and Kyle and mm. like interview people, ask really fucked up questions, sit across the room from them and make them really uncomfortable. But like I'm just doing my job. But you can do that. Yeah, you could right. literally just have a podcast where you interview people. Like yeah, you don't who? need a radio station to give you a chance. You're yeah. doing it right now. Maybe I'll take over the ex-best friends on my own. But that'd be so boring. How am I going to be ex-best friends party of one? Well, we <laughs> could do separate podcasts like for a bit. This is just thoughts unfolding. At, this is not actually happening. What was we're the other one? It. What was the other name that we said we were going to call? Bad Influences. Oh, bad Influences. No, yeah. I can't do that on my own. Well, you could do one just like bad influencing and just yeah i'll talk about all yeah. the times that i got arrested and i've done dumb shit yeah mm. comment down below if you think we should do separate podcasting yeah, while what we're separated th- yeah what do you think we should do while we've got um like eight million miles between the two of us because mm. i'm just gonna be sad yeah it's going to be weird. We can do TikTok lives together. Yeah, well, I ha- can't do it on my own personal page because the last time we did a TikTok live on the Best Friends page, I got banned for banned. talking about sex. <laughs> she got banned for life. <laughs> Literally banned for life on TikTok. But it beats my last TikTok account that I had up. I don't even know if I've said this on the podcast. I was making a like a compilation video on TikTok and accidentally added one of my OnlyFans videos into it. By accident, and I'm by OnlyFans video, I mean full fucking porn that of a little clip that I added in by accident, and it was up for half an hour before it got taken down. <laughs> That's fucked. and my whole TikTok got banned, and I and my Instagram got deleted too, all in one day. Lost my Instagram and my TikTok like that overnight because I'd accidentally added a pornographic oh video God. to a to my TikTok and lost everything, lost all my followers, lost. So much fucking income because I was doing OnlyFans. Was Wait, so how'd you lose your Instagram? It was attached to my TikTok. I had both of them gone. See ya. What the fuck? I know. That's why this Instagram that I have now is average at par. Uh, average at best, but whatever. Subpar. I just feel like I've given up on Instagram. Yeah, I don't really care. I That's just post actually, stuff because I think it's fun. Something else that I had a topic that I wanted to talk about is like I'm literally so sick of Instagram. I'm at this point like – should I just become a meme account? Because I'm fucking over everything on Instagram besides memes. All I do mm. is go on Instagram, watch my friends' stories, and look at memes and send memes to my friends. You should do memes on Facebook. It's way better. Oh, I don't really go on Facebook. Yeah, no one does. I do, and it's so <laughs> much fun. Literally nobody else goes on Facebook, but I'm like, I love Facebook. I think Facebook is hilarious. It's literally one of my favorite things to do is scroll on Facebook. The only thing I like doing on Facebook is going on like the local community page that I'm on for my area and just reading the shit people post. <laughs> like the other day, this lady was like, if you're walking your dog and it shits, 
do not pick it up and put it in our bins because it's too hot and it smells like shit in the bin. And then all these people were like full on commenting for like hours back and forth to each other. And I I just got so deep into it, just reading it. Like, look, she's not wrong. I mean, yeah, she's not wrong. But also, like, who fucking cares? It's all going to go out with the willy bin man anyway. Mm. As long as they're not coming up your side porch and putting their bag of dog shit. If your bin is out on the side of the road, it's free for all. It's free game. It is free fucking game for anyone. I will put my rubbish on your in your bin if it's on the side of the road. That's. That is not a real thing. Yeah, you just outed yourself. I'm coming to my house, your house, and I'm putting rubbish in your bin. Totally going to put I, – I think, in my opinion, if your bin is out on the side of the road and I have rubbish, it's better for me to put it in your bin than it is for me to put it on the ground. Not that I would ever put rubbish on the ground. I'm not a litterer and I would never do that and anyone that does can actually eat a dick. Um, but if your bin's there, of course I'm going to use it. The fuck? Litterers are the worst when I see like – a bag of McDonald's or a bag of like any fast food on the side of the road that you know that like someone has just thrown out of their window. If you know someone who does that you, or you ever see someone doing it, like literally report them. You can Cancel actually, them. You can report littering and yeah. they'll, they'll get a fine, which is fucking amazing. And that's what they deserve. Yeah, I ha- oh, it makes me feel sick. I don't even spit gum out the window. No, neither. Especially not on the Gold Coast. It's way too close to the ocean. But I don't spit gum out the window. I don't – littering is as – the worst. It's You're a worst real. It's person. a real icky trait. Like it's, it's like icky. Littering is just as bad as people who are like rude to waiters. Oh my like, god, it's yuck. just disgusting. What do you reckon your biggest ick is? Um, like just someone, something that someone, maybe not the biggest ick, but an ick where you're like, I'm fully like grossed out by that. Um, or oh, grossed out, icked out. You know, icked yeah. out by it. You know, I actually really don't like loud motorbikes oh. and people who drive them. And my dad's someone who drives them. <laughs> and where we used where we like live by the coast, it's like near a main road. And there's so many mm. motorbikes that just go by. It's like they wait at the light and they take off as loud as they possibly can. Like my baby is asleep. Can you shut the fuck up? Nothing annoys me more. And it gives me the ick when I'm in public and I see guys like riding their bike and then they'll like see you and they take off really fast and really loud. I'm like, and they're like, rum, 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 rum. you're like, Sh- shut, stop. Those decibels were way too loud. They hurt my ears. I don't care if I sound like a grandma. I can't stand loud cars. No, I agree. I my vagina gets concaved inward when I yes. hear people rev their cars or their bikes. It like closes up. Oh my God. I literally don't even have a hole anymore. It's so concaved. It's completely closed up. <laughs> it's just, I hate, yeah, I get really icked out by people yep. who, like, rev their cars. Yeah, totally yours? agree. Um, well, it only recently is starting to change, but I – oh, Bianca, you can't see her on the camera, but B's walking out with Realm onto the street. Bianca and Realm are out Hi. here. I'm just going to check if they're okay. Look at his cute little face. You guys okay? Oh. Hi. You're so cute. Hi, little boy. You're so wow, cute. Look at I you. love you so much. Do you want to get the stroller out? You sure? Hi, darling. Oh, my God. He's so cute. Wow. He looks so different every time I see him. He, like, grows into his face. He's just so handsome. Wow, that's your kid, man. Isn't I know. That so weird. It's really crazy. Is it really weird to think that you like grew him and then pushed him out in your vagina? I didn't. Well, push you him tried out my to vagina, push him but, out. but like he yeah. came out of your body. Yeah, it is weird. Every time I look at him, I'm like, what the fuck? The human body really fucks me up. I made you. It's yeah. so crazy. You made someone's brain and his fingernails. You made eardrums. Mm. You made a dick and balls. Like you did the whole fucking thing. And now I've got to make him into like a citizen of society. Like I've got to teach him things. Me and Bianca have stopped. I don't know if I've mentioned this in the podcast before, but we've stopped saying like men are shit basically. Yeah. Now that you have a son. Yeah. We have to really be like, you know, put it to the person. Like this person annoyed me because they did this, not Mm. just categorize, which, you know, we shouldn't do anyway, Mm. but it's yeah, been something that we've had to be like, I don't want him to think that we think that 
this Men is what shit. it's like. Yeah. No, yeah. You got to make him one of the good guys. I think I said that before. I mm. think I said it way too many times on that one episode. Good guy, good guy, good guy. He's definitely, <laughs> you're definitely going to make a good little man. He's going to be a good guy. Um, But my ick, mm-hmm. it's only recently starting to change. Um, And I'll own that. But for the most part, I get really icked out when people don't wear shoes in supermarkets. Oh, yeah. That's a big ick for me. That's so it is. It is. Yeah, it is recently started to change. I've started to just like let it go because it's really not that deep and it's really not that bad, especially living on the beach. Like no one fucking wears shoes ever. Like no. if, if they're walking through the middle of the city, then like what the fuck are you doing? But Bianca's we live right near the beach. So being from the US, Bianca's mum like saw so many people with no shoes on in grocery mm. stores and every single time she's like, what the fuck? Yeah, it is really strange. I feel like I have a weird mindset about it, but I'm trying to get over it. You're getting over it as in like you would do it or? Well, I went into the fuel station this afternoon without shoes on, so kind of, maybe. I feel like I'm getting over it. Dirty. Growing. Um, I <sighs> actually, let's just do questions back and forth because this is oh kind of fun. Okay. I have one. Okay, go. Um. What is some advice that someone's given you that's stuck with you? Or even just like a quote that is just like. Like a Pinterest quote? Yeah. <laughs> Could be that. Just, you know, if you're running late, just make sure you get a coffee so you're at least caffeinated when you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that actually makes that's good advice. Feel, actually. That actually makes me feel sick because I said that so casually the other day. I was just having a conversation. I was like, well, you know what? If you're already running late, you may as well get a coffee. Mm-hmm. I actually kill myself. Like actual put myself in the bin because it came out so casually and then I was like as soon as I said it I was like oh my god it's cringy but it's true and then their response was I can't believe you just fucking said that so I'm gonna probably print that out and like put it in my kitchen but I reckon I reckon one of my favorite things of advice and like this might sound a little bit cliche is like it's just not that deep it's not it's really not that deep like a lot of things are really deep and like I'm a super I don't know if this is a surprise to you at least. I'm a super emotional person. That's not a surprise to me no. or anyone. Um, <laughs> I'm a super emotional person. I cannot physically hide how I feel at all. Um, but when I start to get like really overwhelmed or anxious or whatever, I just remind myself, I'm like, it's just not that deep. It's I'm like, not. I can do anything I want. I have free will. Mm-hmm. I literally can do anything. I don't have to be a part of this if I don't want to. I don't have to involve myself in this situation that's upsetting me if I don't want to do that. Mm-hmm. It's really just not that deep. There are things that are incredibly deep, but mm-hmm. most things are not that deep. Really just aren't. Like, it kind of comes with like, you know, how will you feel about this situation in five years? Mm. And you'll if your answer is, oh, my God, I will not care by then, why do you care now? Speaking of five years, where do you see yourself in five years' time? Um, where do I see myself in five years? Like I want to have a house in Australia in the US. Mm-hmm. That's my goal. I'm just going to take a photo of you right now while you're talking because the sunset looks really cute in the background. <laughs> Keep going. Keep um, talking. I see myself probably with another Tesla because we fucking love Tesla so much and we just want, like I just would never get another car and I want to have a second car. I see myself with one to two more children. One to two? Yeah, I want so many kids. I want a little- You want two more kids? You want cult. three children? I would have five. It's so fun. I mean, I can't say that because I don't have kids so I don't really understand, but like five? Like a little clan. I'll be like Kelly with the six kids. Well, I mean, you're from one of- Four. Yeah, and so, it's fun. Yeah, I love you have the lots chaos. of siblings. Um, I just want to go back to the piece of advice. Oh, I sorry, I really just took a left on that, didn't I? No, that's so fun. I just have one that has stuck in my head and not left my head since 2015 when someone said it to me. Um, so basically the backstory is that this was an acting school and like our acting coach said to us group of girls – like just be who you are. Like he was trying to say, like, just be yourself, be who you are. Don't try to be someone you're not, which is super cliche advice. And we were kind of like, yeah, we know, like we're not, we are ourselves. But 
he formed it in the way of saying like, he was like, he said, you know, like some, he's like, you're really funny. Like you're such a funny person, but your problem, and this was relating to acting, is you're trying to be the girl next door. Like so many girls want to be the hot girl. They want to be the pretty girl. And he wasn't saying it to me in a rude way of like, you're not attractive, but he was just saying like, don't, you don't have to try to be like the best, the popular girl, the pretty girl, like focus on the things that like are actually important to you and your actually good traits. He's like, you're such a funny person, but you're not showing your funniness because Mm. you're trying too hard to be the cool girl, the pretty girl. And I was like, it just like really knocked me. And he was like, he wasn't saying it to just me. He was saying it to a group of girls and telling each individual girl like things about themselves. But I was like, holy shit. It just like blew my mind that like we really try to like be the Barbie. Like we try so hard to be like the it girl. Mm. And it's so pick me. It's so like, no, why don't you be the good traits of yourself that you are? Mm. I feel like I, I'm, I'm, I don't think anyone's ever really said that to me. I mean, probably, but like I <laughs> probably everyone's like, George, what are you doing? Um, but I feel like I can really relate to that. Cause I feel like I used to try and be that bitch, mm. but now I'm like, not that bitch at all. Like mm. I don't try and be anything that I'm not. I don't try and look like any one else. Like, I just am very much, like, happy to be myself, even mm. though, like, I could probably do some more squats and I could probably shut the fuck up. But that's just me, you know? And people love you for when you're being you. Yeah. That's a really good piece of advice. I know. I loved it. Yeah. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? <sighs> All right. I'm thinking big. Because mm-hmm. why not? Go big or go home. Absolutely. Um. I'd love – I hate that I'm starting it on the fact of, like, a partner, but, like, that's what I want. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, as a person, do not need anyone. I want to be with someone mm-hmm. in a healthy, happy, loving way. Yeah. I want to be loved. I want to be nurtured and, like, whatever, all that yucky stuff, but that's what I want. Mm-hmm. I would love to be in five years' time – Deep in a happy, healthy, thriving relationship. Mm -hmm. Totally madly in love with someone who is equally, if not more, in love with me. Um, I want to have seen more of the world. Mm -hmm. In five years' time, I'm going to be 33, which is fucked. Um, So I would like to have a kid by then if kids are in the cards for me. I'm not against having children. I would absolutely love to be a mom. I think I would thrive. But I also am in a position where I wouldn't have a kid on my own. Mm -hmm. Like I'm happy to not have children if I don't ever find anyone. But if I don't find anyone, I'm probably going to run in front of a train. You will find someone. (laughs) And if you want to have kids, you will. Yeah, but in the sense that I'm not going to settle, you know what I mean? But if kids are on the card for me and my future partner, then that's what's going to happen. And so, yeah, obviously – Madly in love, kids, travel, that whole stuff. I would love to have probably like 10 times more money in the bank than what I've got now. I just want to make money. I want to make money. I want to make – but I also don't want to only make money. You know what I mean? I don't want to just work my ass off for the next five years and save a bunch of money. Like I want to earn money. I want to travel. I want to quit jobs. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to literally just get to 33 which is five years from now and be like, bitch, I fucking did everything that I said I was going to do. I did everything that I wanted to do. Like I just want to continue to be a yes man and be like, fuck it. Let's go. You want to move to fucking Europe? Let's go. You want to move to Sydney? Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to, you want me to surrogate your child? Like, Maybe not, but I'll give it a crack. I'll think about it. I'll (laughs) I'll think about it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really... I feel like to me five years is way too far away because when I think about my life five years ago, I was literally married, Mm. saving to buy a house, talking about having kids. I was in a totally different part of my life and I thought that was going to be the rest of my life. A lot can change, yeah. So in five years' time from now, like, I can't even imagine where I'm going to be. I can't even imagine it. As long as me and my friends and my family are all happy and healthy, Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I just do not fucking care. As long as you're having fun. That's all I care about. With the people that you love, like what 
what else is there to life really? Literally. All I care about is having fun, and making memes. and It's just another Pinterest quote. Live, laugh, love. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, <laughs> what's your opinion? <laughs> I love this. What? So I'm going to get live, laugh, love in red cursive writing as a tramp stamp tattooed on me. Are you actually? I want to do it this weekend. <laughs> oh, my If I go to God. Sydney this weekend, I'm going to do it. I think you should do it. I think so too. I think it would be hilarious. Like I just think that that is so funny. It is funny. Mm. And if it's funny to you. Like, That's all that matters. Do it. Yeah. I That's... mean, I've got misspelt shit on my body. I have dumb bitch juice written on my arm. You like me on your body. Literally I have Zoe's. I can't even show I have a jumper on, but I have Zoe's whole selfie. And her Instagram name on my arm, like, mm-hmm. what's live, laugh, love, you know? Like, and I live by that. I literally tell people, I'm like, oh, just live, laugh, loving through life. Like, it is a good quote. Like, as is. cringy as it's been made out, if you're living, laughing, and loving, you're having nothing the can best go wrong. Time. I am just a slut for a Pinterest qu- a quote, and they just fall out of my mouth. And live, laugh, love is one of the most common ones. And to get a tramp stamp is like pretty fucking iconic. Yeah, in red cursive writing, too, like hot. Bring back the tramp stamp. Well, that is a new trend that's going around. But is everyone's it? getting everyone's getting like those real old school ones that like have the – they're like thick and they have like the one print in the middle and then they have all the things that come off the side. I've never Please seen that. Please tell me you know what I'm talking about. I did about. not know that was back. It's totally a thing. They're like giving 1990, but which is such a sleigh. But, I yeah, I think I'm – Gonna do it. I'm if I go to Sydney this weekend, I'm gonna do it. Bring back the tramp stamp. I yeah. never would have thought that would come back. What else should we bring back? Hmm. I also consider getting an eyebrow piercing. I'm really spiral. Am I spiraling? Whoa, an eyebrow piercing. <laughs> yeah, I saw this really fucking hot girl. And like by hot, I mean someone that I want to look like. Okay. Like this girl came off my TikTok and I was like, oh my God, I want to look like this Whoa. bitch. And she um, was really drunk one night. I just pulled a hair out from my fingers. Um, she got really drunk with her friends one night and they dared her to get her eyebrow pierced. And, like, I'm the kind of person that would never turn down a dare. And so is she. So I was like, this bitch is my soulmate. I don't even know who this girl is. I've watched one of her TikToks, like, soulmate. And so she went and did it and got her eyebrow pierced and it looked so good. Such a slay. She looked so fucking hot. And I was like, maybe I should do it. But I'm I just think- really scared of the – if I take it out, like, which I would. I'm not like I'd have it forever. I'm just scared of the hole that would be on my face. Yeah, one of my friends had, like, snake bites mm. when we were younger and she still has the little holes. Like, yeah. she can cover it with makeup, but they're still always there. I have the hole with my belly button oh, and same. it's still ugly. Like, I still hate it. I ripped mm. that out at schoolies and I still have the hole. I am of the mindset, though, that, like, we literally live on – what even is this world? We literally are like a speck in the universe. Who fucking cares? If you want to get a random tramp stamp tattoo or an eyebrow piercing or you want to start a podcast or you want to – like people literally message me and say like, oh, like I need some advice. How should I start YouTube or how should I start a podcast? I'm like, just do it. Just – I was literally about to say, just do it. Pick up your phone. If, even if you don't have equipment, we did it without mics for ages. Pick up your phone that has an awesome camera. <laughs> yeah, they know. They were all like, get mics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can upload content for free. You can go get a eyebrow piercing, tramp stamp, like yeah. literally whatever you want to do. Just fucking yeah. do it. Literally just do it. Do whatever you fucking want. Literally just live, laugh, love. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I promise you your life will get so much better. So like if you need to quit your job, I'm such a big fucking enthusiast. Huge enthusiast to quit your job. If you're not happy, just quit. Just quit. Literally just quit. Go on Centrelink. We're lucky enough to live in Australia mm-hmm. where you can get money from the government to pay at least your bills, mm-hmm. the borderline of whatever that is. Go on Job Seeker on Centrelink and get a payment from the government and quit your motherfucking job if you're not happy. Until you find something else that you like, honestly. Why not? There are so many opportunities to change your life. Like just do literally it. literally do it. Literally just do it. I love making people quit their jobs. I know, me too. As soon as someone mentions that they're not happy, I'm like, you should quit. just quit. You should definitely quit. Yeah, your boss sounds like a cunt. As soon as I see them again, have you quit your job yet? Mm. Like I really try to make people quit their jobs. This this last job that I quit was like the hardest job I've ever quit in my life because I loved it there. Yeah. I actually really loved it. I loved the people that I worked with, but money in childcare is BS and it's just not what I want to do long term. But like I've just started this new job, which I think is amazing. And it's like everything that I can see myself doing long term. But I'm also like – 
don't ask me to commit to something like this because I could just up and leave in a, in an instant. Mm-hmm. Like if I want to go somewhere, if I want to go and move away when my lease is over, like I'm going to do that. You are never Don't tied. get too comfortable because I'm going to do it. Yeah, you will never be – you're never tied to your job. Like, no. You can always start something new. I've been seeing a lot of TikToks lately of like girls saying, hey, I'm – like 25, I'm 28, I'm 30, like all different ages. And, you know, I just quit my corporate job or I quit my job that I got my uni degree for and now I'm studying like to be a vet because that's my dream. Mm -hmm. Or now I'm like traveling the world teaching English or like I just fucking love it. I love people living their dreams. Me too. Living – yeah, I love that shit. Live your dreams. Live – that's what we should make this podcast episode. Live, laugh, love. And where is Kate Middleton? Zoe's moving to America. That's the whole title. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the title just keeps going and going and going and going. I'm just thinking about the fact that this is like this episode's been like an hour or so now, and I'm like, oh my god, it's happening! It's happening! I know. It's coming. <sighs> I'm doing really well to not cry. Close. I feel like I'm a bit of a crybaby, but I'm really trying not to cry because I don't want to be embarrassing on the internet. <laughs> Because me crying on the internet is the most embarrassing thing I've done. I was literally about to say, <laughs> you don't want to be embarrassing on the internet. What else do we do on the internet besides be embarrassing? Oh, my God. I'm literally always embarrassing. The internet is literally so cringe. Anytime I post anything on Instagram, I cringe. Anytime I po- see someone else post on social media, I'm like, this is cringe. Like, why is everything about this so cringy? Yeah. You know what is cringe? Our old YouTube videos together. Oh, my God. They yeah. are cringe. They are cringe. If anyone wants to have a little laugh... There's videos on my old YouTube channel, which I obviously haven't posted on for years. Maybe you should um, start posting on that. Well, I posted one video like a year and a half ago giving a little life update for the mm. first time in like three years. And now it's been like a year and a half since I did that. And even then, my life then a year and a half ago was totally, literally couldn't have been more different if I fucking tried. Why don't you do another one? Do another life update. <sighs> Maybe I will. Maybe I'll wait for some more like... Oh, just I just put a list in my phone of all the fucking weird shit that happens. Honestly, mm. I love it. Just laugh, live, laugh, laugh, and live, <laughs> laugh, love. What am I saying? <laughs> live, laugh, live, love, love, love always. You know, high smile toothpaste flavors. Everyone, all together now. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> For real. The fact that there's like cinnamon flavor and mm. marshmallow, there's blueberry, there's fucking, I've seen every flavor, even Anna Paul did a collab and hers is like candy floss or whatever the fuck it's called. No, you get fucking peppermint only. Peppermint toothpaste is the only thing anyone, or spearmint, I don't know what the flavor is, but mint is the only flavor anyone should be brushing their teeth with. And anyone that actually uses that high smile flavored BS and actually likes it, are you okay? Do you know that even dentists have started, um, there's like a high smile whitening that you can get done. Like high smile is actually like as annoying as like their million ads they fucking have. Oh my God. I'm going to um, block them soon. <laughs> there is like, I went onto a website the other day to like book in with a dentist for a whitening and one of the options was high smile and I was like, oh. I mean, it does work. Like they're high, but it does hurt it? it hurt my teeth after a while. That's oh, why really? I stopped doing it. Like my, I need to fucking wipe my teeth now. But when I um used to use it all the time, I would use like the mouth thing. Um, and after like two weeks, I couldn't use it because my teeth hurt too much. I would have it in my mouth for like a minute and I'd have to take it out because my teeth were hurting. Whoa. And I already have really sensitive teeth and like re- so many issues with my teeth from my accident mm. um, that I was like, I'm not going to risk it. I'm scared my teeth going to fall out. And like I'm already one down. I really can't risk it losing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have a missing one too. Not a front tooth. You're missing a front tooth, mm, which she, is wild. You know how, you know what, one of my growth, so my missing tooth used to be my biggest insecurity. Always mm. has been, I've literally had a missing tooth my entire fucking life. I used to beg her to let me video her taking see it. it out. Yeah, I never used to let anyone see it. It was my, as I said, biggest insecurity. Still not a big fan of it, but now I just fuck with it. I just rock with it. The other night I was silly as fuck at a party and I just took it out and put it on my friend's lap. She didn't even know for like five minutes. And then she looked down and she goes, oh, my God. And I just looked at her and she was like, oh, my God. And I was just like, 
And I just smiled and she was just like, that's so good. <laughs> well, Tana yeah. Mojo literally uploaded a photo Hopefully. of her missing t- tooth and then just sold the pictures on a T-shirt. So it's like, own it. I know. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should just make some goodbye merch and the goodbye merch is a picture of me with my tooth out of the ex-best yes. friends. <laughs> I've said this before online. Like if someone knows how to fucking make merch or like Honestly. designs, please contact me at the email. Contact me and just be like, I can do this for you and we can work together. Literally. We we never even ended up sending out the stickers that we had. I think that's because Emily had them all. Um, what stick? Oh, yeah. Remember we how so we, got, we got so many stickers made? Well, we can send them out when we give out merch, I guess. I mean, yeah. If, if that's what people – if the people still want it, we'll still do it. I just literally need someone to actually contact me and be yeah. like, I know how to make designs for merch because I don't know how to do it. Maybe we'll get like those Kmart – pride shirts that you got that said live laugh lesbian oh the target ones mm. yeah live laugh lesbian live laugh lesbian i can't <sighs> wait to go to pride in la i'm so excited i'm so excited for you to do that that's definitely one of the things i've always wanted to go to mm-hmm. i want to do la pride and chicago pride oh my god that'd be so fun i love that you're going to get summer in america Mm. I hate that you're going to get there and it's going to be negative like 20 degrees right now. Poor little Relly is going to be a little marshmallow. Well, it's actually not snowing in Wisconsin, Chicago at the moment. I think it's oh. snowing in Colorado, but it won't be like full-on snow where we are. Apparently, actually, I have been there this time of year. It yeah, feels COVID. like our winter right now there. So it's like cold, but it's not like freezing. freezing. It's actually their spring when we get there. So oh. their spring is like our winter. Okay. So, like, I'll be cold, but Bianca's mum will be like, oh, my God, this in is so nice. In shorts and a T-shirt. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I'll be fucking freezing. Wow. Wow, I'm so excited for you. I know. A lot of a lot of adventures to come. This is just my dream life, like traveling you're doing, with my baby. Is yeah, just, you're literally doing everything you said you were going to do. Yeah. Oh, That's the best kind of life when you actually just do the things you say you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan's gonna cry. <laughs> I think that you should come visit us. Oh, totally. That's not even an option. I just hate the fact that it's just gonna be a visit. You oh can come god. and we could do a US podcast. Oh my god, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it at like somewhere fun though, like on the s- s- Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah. Us with our mics. Fuck. Just yeah, filming so the ex best friends outside. And I wanna like go up to people and be like, Do you know who Zoe Benkowski is? <laughs> And literally everyone would be like, no. And I'd be like, oh, you should. (laughs) It's me. It's us. We're both Zoe Benkowski. Please give me attention. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for listening. It's only goodbye for now. Thanks for the last year and a half. It's been so fun. The ex-best friends. It's not over forever. We will be back. (laughs) Time will fly. But in the meantime... Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on TikTok. I'm going to force Jordan to do Day in the Life TikToks because you should. Maybe even YouTube videos. Maybe even our own podcasts. We'll see. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you, guys. We love you. Make sure you subscribe, like. Do it all. Live, laugh, love. Live, laugh, love. Quit your job. Live, laugh, love. (laughs) (laughs) 